guys, it's Stephanie and I'm here to do my March wrap up and possibly an April TBR. So since my last video, Katie over at Chapter Sex, who is one of my favorite booktubers, did a video on booktubers that read adult fiction. To talk about that stigma that booktube only reads young adult fiction, she did list, she listed a lot of really great channels that talk about adult books and she mentioned my channel in that list. So I got a few new subscribers from that. So if you are new or you came here from there, welcome. Thank you so much for subscribing. Just an intro, I do read horror mainly, I would say horror mainly, also thrillers, literary fiction, mystery stuff like that. So like I said, if you're new here, welcome. So I'm going to do my March wrap up. The way I do it is I talk about the books I liked the most and then all the way down in descending order to books I liked the least in the month. So first book I want to talk about I did as an audiobook and it was the second in a series and this was Waking Gods by Sylvain Nouvel. So this is the second in the Themis files. It's a sci-fi series, which I didn't think I liked sci-fi. It's a whole thing, but I love this series. I can't say too much about it because it's the sequel. So if I say some things, they're going to ruin the first book for you. So I can't talk too much about it. But I was as emotionally engrossed in this book as I was in the first one. There's some characters that die and I was distraught <laughs> by their deaths. I just didn't see it coming. And the way that these books are written are almost like a play. There are a lot of dialogue and interview transcripts. So the audiobook has a full cast of characters doing all the voices and they do a great job. They really get into it and take it seriously. There's a lot of production value in these audiobooks. So if you're looking for a good audiobook, I 100% recommend the two books that are out in this series. And I know there's a third one coming out this year or next year that I cannot wait for. The second book that I loved this month, I already did a review on and I have a lot of books to talk about so I'm not going to spend too much time talking about it. And yes, that is Kill Creek by Scott Thomas. I read this because this was one of the nominees for the Bram Stoker Award. It didn't end up winning in its category for a debut novel but I was blown away by it. I loved everything about it. The premise is that four horror authors spend a night in a notoriously haunted house as a publicity stunt like they're doing this interview that's going to be live streamed and you get to know all these characters. They're all bringing their own baggage into the story and that affects what they see in the house and how the house affects them. If you, like me, love haunted house stories, I would definitely recommend picking this up. I will link my review down below so you could check it out. I just gushed for three minutes is basically what it is. Next book I read was Confessions by Kane Minato. I think I had heard people recommend Penance, which is her other, her newer novel on a lot of, I think, Book Riot podcasts uh, recommend her a lot, but I hadn't heard anyone talk about this one, which was her debut novel. And she is a Japanese writer. And this story is about a teacher who is a single mom. She has a three-year-old daughter and the three-year-old daughter is found in a pool and it looks like she drowned. And so the novel opens up with this teacher addressing her class and letting her know like, you know, I'm taking the next year off. Obviously the events that have happened have affected me greatly. And she's like, but you know, my daughter's death wasn't an accident. It was a murder, you know, dun dun. Also, two people were involved and they're in this class. It was crazy. So she drops that bombshell. She doesn't name names in the first chapter, but she gives like enough information so that people know who it is. And there's all these mind games and manipulations. And so the first chapter she's addressing this class and then the next chapters, it's different people's perspectives. So you do get a chapter from each of the killers and the murderers and how everything happened and how it came to be and just the mind games and the manipulations that people play with each other and the stuff that happens was so messed up. If you're looking for a really good thriller, I could not put this down and I had been having a drag spell with thrillers. They just weren't doing it for me. And this was great. A lot of people said, um, I read somewhere that it was like the Japanese Gone Girl and I get it. Just the things people do to each other and this teacher and her class, I don't know if I mentioned, I think they're like eighth graders or seventh graders. So I don't know, it was really messed up. There is a movie, I believe, based on this book that I want to watch because it definitely looks like it, it gets dark. It looks really interesting. Uh, so that was Confessions by Kane Minato. 
totally recommend. The next book I want to talk about was one that I, as a mother, had not been wanting to pick up because just the premise and when people talked about it, I just didn't feel great. Um, but for the podcast that Rachel and I do, Books in the Freezer, we have an upcoming episode that this was going to fit with. So I wanted to read it to discuss the topic. And this is We Need to Talk About Kevin by Lionel Shriver. And if you don't know, We Need to Talk About Kevin, this takes place after Kevin has committed a mass murder at his high school. And this is told from the point of view of his mother. It's told in epistolary format. She is writing letters to her estranged husband, Franklin, about Kevin. No, we need to talk about Kevin, obviously. And so she is talking about, you know, their relationship before. She kind of jumps back and forth in time with the things that she references. And like, you know, do you remember when Kevin was a baby and like this and this and this happened? And so there's a lot of conversations that happened. There's a, a bit of a, a chicken and the egg situation with his mother because she didn't really want to be a mother. She definitely had negative feelings towards Kevin. There's a little bit of a question hinted at that like was she too cold? Was she, you know, cold and distant to Kevin? And you know, it was he in turn cold and distant to her? Or is it like she believes that, you know, her son is evil and has just always had it in for his mother like they just do not get along which came first is one affect the other nature versus nurture you know and i think with a lot of books that fall along these lines that deal with this kind of plot it does deal with the nature versus nurture question this book was very a lot more on the literary side than on the you know thriller mystery suspense side she doesn't do suspense in like a, a classic way there's not something that like builds up and then it happens what I noticed that she did was that she would hint at something that was going to happen and then you know two chapters later it would be after the thing had already happened so there's not really like a classic build up like climax resolution it was like something I, I know it was kind of dealt with in a roundabout way but we're also dealing with one character's experience and so if that character wasn't there for these things to happen and they're getting a call from the hospital after these things have already happened you know what I mean it's because we're dealing with that and so I think it makes sense if we're dealing with that character's limited experience and what they would not have been there for so Sorry, I don't know if that, that sentence probably did not make any sense. Anyway, I really enjoyed it. It is very like wordy. It's not like a fast pace like this and this and this, you know, but I really enjoyed it. It definitely made me think and it was a pretty long book, but I would say everything and everything that we learn about Kevin as we go through the story definitely kept me interested. So I didn't want to pick this up because I feel like the people that really like this book are people that don't have kids and it's just kind of, and it's one of those books that's like, this is why I don't have kids. So I would say even if you do have kids, the stuff, the way that it's dealt with, I think there's a bit of distance so that the subject matter is a little more palatable, if that helps. If you are someone that has kids and has been apprehensive about picking a book like this up, I would say it's dealt with in a decent way. The next book that I read this month that I really enjoyed was this novella. Uh, this is coming out in April, so look out for it. This is from Tor.com. This is The Atrocities by Jeremy C. Shipp. It's a very short novel and this is also kind of a gothic haunted house ghost story where this teacher is hired to be a tutor at this house and when she gets there she's asking about the student that you know she's been hired to be a tutor for and she she may or may not be alive it gets so it's a bit of a ghost story a bit of a mystery some really good twists and turns also there's literally a maze on this cover because they have a maze in their front yard with a lot of grotesque statues called the atrocities so very atmospheric uh, like it's a little over a hundred pages so it's like a very fast atmospheric gothic story if you are interested in that that is the atrocities by jeremy c ship the next book i read i listened to as an audiobook that was american elsewhere by robert jackson bennett so this book is kind of a blend of urban fantasy, science fiction, and horror. Basically we are following the main character Mona who is an ex-cop and her father has just died and when they read out his will she realizes that she has inherited a house in the town of Wink, New Mexico that belonged to her mother. Now Mona doesn't know a lot about her mother because her mother committed suicide when she was 10 years old 
So her mother's always kind of been a mystery to her. And so she's very intrigued and immediately drives to this town in New Mexico to go check out this house. But this town, you know, Wink is this suburban area. There's this abandoned laboratory in the town and it just seems odd. No one really remembers anything. So she moves to this town. It just kind of looks like a housing track or I know that's what we called it in California. And then when I moved to the Midwest, they called it a subdivision. So it's like this subdivision in New Mexico. You know, all the houses are very similar. It has that suburban feel, but it also has kind of this Stepford Wives feel where like the people there, there's something off about them. They don't seem to be very receptive to outsiders. In fact, everyone seems really surprised that there is an outsider. And they're always mentioning that like, oh, no one new has come to this town like ever. Like, I don't, like, how did you get here? So there is a lot going on and a lot to unpack. It was very interesting though. And even though books like this usually aren't my thing, this was a long audiobook. This was like over 30 hours and I listened to the entire thing. I was engrossed in this story the whole time. So it was very interesting. I think it had a lot to say about the American dream. Uh, and I think you know, the theatrics of suburban living because the houses are so close together that you know, you are more aware and you, everyone knows stuff about everybody. So I don't know. I really enjoyed this. This book was really enjoyable and it really surprised me. So if that sounds like something you would enjoy, definitely pick up American Elsewhere by Robert Jackson Bennett. The next book I read, uh, was it like I enjoyed it? It definitely wasn't my favorite in the series so far. And that was The Secret Place by Tana French. This is the fifth installment in the Dublin Murder Squad series. And in the Dublin Murder Squad series, we are focusing on a different protagonist, like different case within the Dublin Murder Squad. And this one, it just wasn't the kind of story that I usually like. So the last one, Broken Harbor, has probably been my favorite out of the series. And this one, the murder takes place at a boarding school and there's like they're interviewing a bunch of teenage girls and it just kind of gets into like teenage girls and their secrets and their secret lives and I'm kind of tired of that like I know teenage girls are crappy and that's not news to me I wasn't shocked by this and I also don't care about teenage drama at all like I don't care about like who likes who and who backstabbed who and who's dating who's ex-boyfriend and how that affects everything I literally could not care. <laughs> I just don't care. So um, I liked it. It just it just didn't go places that I really enjoyed. The protagonist in this one, I don't even remember his name because he was cardboard and super boring. They try to make him interesting because he used to work in cold cases. He's trying to kind of weasel his way into murder squad. And that's honestly the most interesting thing about him. He was just like super boring and super frustrating. And so like, I didn't hate this book. Like I didn't love Faithful Place. Faithful Place to me was also a total letdown. Just all her books that have the word place in them haven't been great for me. So I didn't love it, but I didn't hate it. Like the writing was great. Uh, I kind of guessed who the murderer was right away. And that's usually what happens on audio because someone will say something that will just stick out more, I think, when I hear mysteries on audio. So when they found the clue and like something is revealed about a certain character very early on in the beginning, I caught onto it right away. It was fairly interesting, but not my favorite so far. <laughs> so that was The Secret Place by Tana French. And now for my biggest disappointment <laughs> this month, and I always feel bad saying that, like I'm getting you guys all hyped up for like an awful book. Uh, it was a two star, a two star book for me. And that was Audition by Ryu Murakami. I did this as a buddy read with Devin over at the Indian Insomniac and Sean over at Eclectic Reads. Also, we read Kill Creek together, me and Sean. I forgot to mention that. But, you know, this was a short novel. It has a very infamous movie that's based on this book that I think people tend to reference more than they reference the book. And I see why, because this book is so boring and you wouldn't think it's boring because this book is very short and usually what's really great about short books is that they kind of just get to the point not this one we spent a lot of time learning that aoyama is a widower and you know everything that gets set up for this woman to audition for this movie that doesn't exist and I don't know, it takes like let me see how many pages this is this is 190 pages I will say nothing of interest like something crazy happens like 150 pages into it and then I would say like nothing happens again 
out of like 190 pages, I would say page 186. And up until page 186, it is very slow and nothing happens and you're just like getting this relationship and people talking about their feelings and that's fine but not what I wanted out of this. <laughs> this was a horror novel and you can't just bore me for 80% of your book and then throw something shocking at me the last couple of pages. It's just not gonna work for me. So not a fan. Let me know if there's another Ryu Murakami book that is better than this that maybe has better pacing because I did not get along with this. So that was auditioned by Ryu Murakami. So those were the books that I read in March and these are the books that I'm planning to read in April. I am still reading George Eliot's Middle March. I am about there. I'm now on part four, three love problems and Dorothea is a little better of a person like I kind of feel sorry for her I was definitely very angry at her at the beginning I will say all that anger has shifted onto Fred Fred is gonna have to do a lot for me to ever like him again right now I think he is trash and he deserves everything bad that happens to him and those are my thoughts on Fred at the moment again I'm only on part four but those are my thoughts on him. Um, I'm reading this with Kate Howe. It's been really enjoyable. We've been kind of catching up as soon as we finish like a certain chunk of it. So it's been loose and I like that. I received the trauma cleaner uh, from St. Martin's Press and this is about a woman who is a forensics cleaner but she also deals with like hoarders and stuff like that. And this is really interesting. I thought this was a memoir and it is actually a biography. So um Sarah Krasnestein is writing about forensic cleaner Sandra Pankhurst, who is just absolutely fascinating. Uh, there's alternating chapters between like Sarah's upbringing and her story and then kind of present day Sarah kind of doing walkthroughs with Sandra throughout her day and different jobs and kind of what she does. And Sandra is really fascinating. Uh, she's a trans woman. She was born in Australia and just the kind of stuff she does, just the kind of jobs that she takes. I just love the way they casually talk about things and she's like, oh, you know, I can't. I have a love triangle stabbing on Thursday, so that's not going to work. <laughs> so very interesting. Uh, I'm definitely hoping to get a little more into how she got into the line of work that she's in which I think is absolutely fascinating. So, so far I'm really liking it. It's been very readable. Um, and there is like pictures and stuff. It'll be interesting. I haven't read a lot of biographies where there's someone that's like spending time with a person and like writing about them. So it'll be interesting to see how that differs from like a memoir where that person has total control. I also received this from Word Hoard. This is Tales of a Talking Board. So these are short stories that all revolve around Ouija boards. Some of them have been kind of hit or miss for me. Um, I only have a little bit left, so I'll definitely be finishing this up in April, but I will say that the books that I have liked, the first one, Yes, No, Goodbye by Christy Demeester was amazing, and uh, there was also one that Rachel at the Shades of Orange talked about, uh, Into the Skin, Deep Into the Skin. That one was really good too, and I'll probably talk about it more when I do a wrap up on this. <laughs> also one that I received from the author, this is Dawn and Damnation by Clark Casey. And this is a, a paranormal Western, I would say take on the good place. Like it's like these people are all dead and they're kind of in purgatory, but it's like this Western feel and there's like vampires and it sounds really weird, but all those things are also, I'm like, yeah, I'm here for that. I'm here for like Western good place vampire paranormal stuff. Let's do it. So it definitely sounds like it's just gonna be kind of a fun, paranormal story. We'll see if there's elements of horror in it, but even if there's not, I'm here for it. And then I am doing a buddy read with Liz Schubert because she sent me this book a while ago. Uh, her library has like a really awesome dollar section, so she sent me this. This is The Expatriates by Janice Y.K. Lee, and she saw a copy at her library the other week, so she bought herself a copy, so now we have matching copies. So this is about, I think, three or four women who are living in Hong Kong and they are expatriates and I'm guessing it's about their day-to-day -day lives and how their lives intersect. I'm actually not sure. I'm guessing they all know each other. You know what? I like to go into books blind, so don't mind me just throwing stuff at the wall. <laughs> 
because I actually don't know exactly what it's about. It sounds really interesting and this cover is really pretty. So I'm planning on reading this next month with Liz. And on my Kindle, I am making my way through Christy Demeester's short story collection, Everything That's Underneath. And I think they're classified as like horror weird fiction, uh, but I'm really liking them. She has this really beautiful literary way of writing that feels very dreamlike. And I'm really enjoying it. And I definitely just want to support female horror writers because there's not a lot. So far I have been very impressed with her work. But anyway guys, those are my plans. Let me know if you've read any of these books or have opinions. Let's talk in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Bye!